Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is Lord. We praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please get your Bible. The Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7 that the lips of the priest should keep knowledge and that the people should seek instruction from his lips. For he is the servant or the messenger of the Lord. He says you keep a word. See, that's why you always hear me say, boy, oh boy, do I have a word for you today. Of course I do. I'm a messenger of the Lord. I should have a word. And people should seek instruction from my lips. And that's why I love to ask the Lord, grant me the ear of the learned and the tongue of the learned. I want to hear what you have to say. And then I want to say it the way you want me to say it so that I'm feeding the people properly. You get that? Wonderful, wonderful thing. We've been studying from the subject of living life from a king's perspective. Living life from a king's perspective. The last, oh, three weeks, we've been really, really in-depth about the word perspective itself. We've been talking about the first part of that uh, subject being living life from God's perspective, and He is the King Eternal. Today, I want to focus on the second part of that subject, where I'm living life with a king's mindset, where I'm thinking like God. It's a powerful, powerful thing. I want to start with our, our foundation scripture, then we'll go into a lot of scriptures. You're going to need a pen, highlighter, you're going to need something to write on. I mean, let's go to work. I told you, I'm, I'm a teacher. Um, I appreciate students of the word. I appreciate people that hunger and thirst. Uh, for righteousness. Glory to God. You shall be filled. No doubt about it. Say this with me. I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And I am a member of the household of God. Praise God forevermore. Say this with me. I will continue to develop a kingdom mindset. Yes, I will. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Praise God. I will speak the word of the kingdom. That's powerful. I'm going to speak the word of the kingdom. If you're taking notes, you might, might want to write this down. Kingdom authority is released in words. Kingdom authority is released in words. You notice Jesus never put his hands up and fought anybody. You never hear about it, do you? You never notice he didn't karate and kick nobody and judo and flip anybody, no taekwondo. <laughs> he didn't do none of that stuff. When he faced something, what did he do? He spoke a word. You remember what the centurion told Jesus? You don't need to come down to my house. Speak the word. I'm a man under authority. I know how this thing works. When I say to one man, do, go, he goes. Another do this, he does it. You come here, he comes. See? And you can do the same thing. Just speak the word. What would you say? Kingdom authority is released in words. This is why you have to speak the word of the kingdom. See? So you can release your authority and get things working for you. Amen? Say this with me. I will apply the word of the kingdom. I'm going to be a doer of the word. And lastly, I expect kingdom results. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to get inside the word of God today. We thank you for your holy written word. We thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit, whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide. We expect him today to live big in us, to unveil, unfold, and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits. We expect him to illuminate our minds. Father, grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we may see, Lord, that we can perceive and understand the hidden truths, the mysteries of the kingdom. Father, I yield this vessel to you. I pray that your word will be on my tongue. I pray that my tongue will be like the pen of a ready writer. I pray that my voice will be like a flaming fire and that I would speak as of the oracles of God, that you might be glorified in all things. Grant me utterance today to speak boldly. Grant the people ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah chapter 55, let's look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return or come back to the Lord 
and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and doesn't come back there, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth bud. You see that? You might want to write this down if you never heard me say this. Words express thoughts. Words express ideas. And your perspective is expressed through words. Would you like me to say that again? Words express thoughts. Words express ideas. And words are how you express your perspective. And so God said, so shall my word be. So he said, I'm giving you my thoughts. I'm giving you my ideas. I'm giving you my perspective. In other words, God is saying, this is how I see it. See? Now, the wicked or the twisted needs to take their ways, their thoughts, abandon them, forsake them, turn back to me, get my words, and I'll give you my perspective. Because when I say something, it doesn't come back to me void. It accomplishes what I please, and it prospers in the thing to which I sent it. So if you want to get the kind of results that I'm getting, saith the Lord, then you need my perspective on it, and you need to think it the way I do it. You need my ways. You need my word. You need to act upon it. You need to speak it the way I speak it. Are you getting this? Glory to God. Now, go with me to the book of Colossians chapter 3. We're going to jump right into this. I'm not going to review what we've been doing on the word perspective itself. And the first part of our subject, because remember I said uh, living life from a king's perspective has a dual concept or uh, consisting of two parts. And we studied the last, the first part the last two weeks. So we're not going to do that again. But let's go to that second part and let's just go a little bit deeper. Living life from a king's perspective, the second half simply means I'm living life with a king's perspective mindset a king's mindset a mindset is is simply a fixed mental attitude you might want to write that down a fixed mental attitude let me say it another way this is how i'm going to think when something's fixed that's where it just stays right so my mind's going to stay on this kingship thing my mind's going to stay on this citizen of heaven thing my mind's going to stay on this member of household stuff See, this is how I think. I think royalty. I think I am in Christ, born again, new creation, righteousness of God in Christ, healed by his stripes. Don't have to be broke another day in my life. My mind is set. I'm not going to move it. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the word is working mightily in me. I'm not going to move. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, chapter 89, verse 34, my covenant will I not break. I'm not going to alter the word that has gone out of my lips. The word also said, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So God's word is settled, folks. He's not going to break it. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he needs to repent. He doesn't need to change. What he said, watch this, is law. He's the king. See? And so I'm going to imitate my heavenly father. I'm going to have a king's mindset. I'm going to fix my mind. Colossians chapter 3. Look at verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now remember what the prophet Isaiah said to the people of Israel. He said, seek the Lord while he may be found. See, And that hasn't changed. In the New Testament, we're still admonished to seek. In other words, you're going to have to make an effort to do this. Folks, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And this world is going down a certain mode, a certain cycle, a certain pattern. The Bible calls it lieth in wickedness, the course of this world. 1 John 5, 19 and Ephesians chapter 2. And so we're going against the current, see? And so you're going to need, watch it, power to go against that and be successful. And so seeking has to do with me making an effort. When you go against the current or against the grain, you need power to do that, see? And so... 
He says, seek those things which are above where Christ, and I want you to get this, sits at the right hand of God. Now just envision this with me. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. That would mean God would have to be here on the left. So he's sitting as king. Right? The Bible calls him the king of kings. Now, now the apostle says, we're risen with Christ. And we should begin to seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. The next verse, set your affection on things above, not on things up here. So there goes that word. You have to set your affection. In the Greek, that literally means focus your mind. You have to do that. Go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me give you another witness to that real quick. Look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us or made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And, now listen to me. The word and means he's about to connect what he's about to say to what he just said. In other words, he didn't just make us alive. We didn't just get born again. Listen to what he did. He raised us up together. Glory to God. And made us, here we go, sit together. Now pause for a moment. Go back to Colossians chapter 3. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. I'm going to ask you a silly question. Okay, where is Christ sitting? According to that scripture, forget about your religion and your philosophy. What does the Bible say? Where is he sitting? It says at the right hand of God. Does it not? Go back to Ephesians. He raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is that? According to Colossians 3, at the right hand of God. Get ready. I'm getting ready to tell you something. You, beloved, are a king. Ladies, you, beloved, are queens. Everybody, you are part of a royal family. And, and, and there's scripture right there to prove it. Glory to God. You are a king. Ladies, you are a queen. According to the Bible. And the Bible says, it was his mercy, his great love wherewith he loved you. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Flip over again. <clears throat> Look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me pause this for a second. I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. Living life from a king's perspective uh, literally means living life from a New Testament perspective. Living life from a New Testament pr perspective. Now, let me define that. Living life from the cross to the throne. I said this last week. I'm going to go over it again really briefly. Living life from the cross to the throne. In other words, I live my life based upon what happened at the cross of Calvary. You'll find in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 53. It's very, very explicit about the crucifixion of Jesus. He bore our sin, our sickness, our poverty, our grief, our sorrow. You study that out on your own. That's the only way you're going to really get it. And then Galatians 3.13 backs it up, which says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And you take time to go to Deuteronomy 28 and find out what the curse of the law is. And then you realize that Jesus bore that at the cross. See? And then he separated himself from God. It's called spiritual death. The Bible says he bore the sin of the world on the cross, the weight of sin and all that came with it. He went to hell in our place. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. Now listen to me. He spoiled principalities and powers. That's in Colossians chapter 2. Spoiled them. Made an open show of them. Just wiped the floor with them. Dragged them. You know, he just wiped them out. Right? Took the keys of hell and death. He went into the heavenly holy of holies. Hebrews talks about it. You study this out so you can get it for yourself. I gave you the scriptures. You go study it out so you get it for yourself. And get it down in your spirit where the power is. And then you'll be able to live life from a king's perspective. So he took the blood, 
brought it up to the mercy seat, presented it before the Father, and it obtained an eternal redemption for us. That's in the Bible, folks. I didn't make that up. I didn't get it at the, uh, the daily paper. It's not in the paper. They don't put that in the paper. No, it's in the Bible, see. And then the Bible says he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in the heavens, expecting his enemies to be made his footstool. In other words, I did my part. Now I'm going to sit back and I'm expecting, listen to me, kingdom results. That's what I told you to confess earlier, remember? I expect kingdom results, right? And so listen to Ephesians uh, chapter 1, look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me. I put it in the first person. You should too. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can get this camera on that, but you do it. You notice how my Bible is like colorful in the New Testament. What I do is when it says us, I, I put me right next to it. All through my Bible I do that. All through the Bible. It, it'll say me. In other words, I said this last week. I understand that the Bible is God talking to me. Say that with me. The Bible is God speaking to me. See? And so that's the way I read the Bible. I make it personal. I'm living life from a New Testament perspective. I'm living life from a king's perspective. I'm living life from the cross to the throne. I know what he did at Calvary. I know what he did when he went to hell in my place. I know what he did when he rose from the dead and presented his blood at the heavenly holy of holies. I know that he sat down at the right hand of God. I know that he ever lived to make intercession for me. And so that's the way I live. I don't live based upon my juvenile record. I don't live based upon what he said or she said or what the DSM-4 says. I don't live my life or what statistics say or what the local paper says. Are you listening to me? See, I live life from a New Testament perspective, from a king's perspective, from the cross to the throne. Glory to God. And see, that's why I live victoriously, not because I'm better than anybody else. I found out my election of God. And this is how I'm living my life. And folks, I haven't arrived by no means. But I am determined to live a new testament lifestyle. I'm determined to develop a kingdom mindset. I'm determined to speak the word of the kingdom. No matter what the circumstances. See, I live life from the cross to the throne. Say that with me. I'll live my life from the cross to the throne. Now, when you say a statement like that, make sure you know what you're talking about. You take those scriptures I brought up and you go study them out for yourself. You find out what happened at the cross of Calvary. Not from a religious point of view, folks. I'm talking about go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. You read that stuff. And you notice there I go again. I have it circled and highlighted. I put, he bore my griefs, my weaknesses, my sickness, my pains, my sorrows. See, I make it personal. The Bible is God talking to me. When he was at the cross that day, I was on his mind. He bore my sin up there. He bore my sickness, my poverty. He went to hell in my place. God raised him from the dead. He went to heaven in the heavenly holy of holies presented the blood at the mercy seat. He sat down at the right hand of God. He makes an intercession for me. I can boldly approach the throne of grace, not based on my work, but based upon the finished work of Jesus. And I live my life from a New Testament perspective. Are you getting this? Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Look at that real quick. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me with all spiritual blessings, where is that? In heavenly places in Christ. Now, what's in heavenly places? Hold that thought. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. God has raised me up together, made me sit together in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, as far as God is concerned, as far as the New Testament is concerned, I'm in that heavenly place in Christ. Where the blessings are, all those spiritual blessings, I'm there. According to the book, it's my job to develop a kingdom mindset, to speak in line with that, to apply that, 
and then expect kingdom results. See, expect those spiritual blessings he talked about to magnify or to manifest in my life. And to do that, I'm going to first have to know who I am. Develop a kingdom mindset. Speak that word out of my mouth and apply it in my life. And I have a right to expect kingdom results. Are you getting this? Now, go to verse 4. According as he has chosen me in him before the foundation of the world, that I should be holy. <laughs> now, you know, you go to any regular church and you talk about you holy, them people going to look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> you know, you have to be around some mature saints to talk like this. See, that's why I don't hang around with a lot of folks. They couldn't handle this. See, it says here, I'm holy and without blame before him. In love, not before you, but you're gonna be looking at my faults. You're gonna, see, you're gonna be looking at my past, my juvenile record. You want to know all that stuff. God says, In Him, in love. Verse 5 Having predestinated us or me unto the adoption of His child by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace. And I love this part. Wherein he has made me accepted in the beloved. That's a New Testament perspective, isn't it? Isn't that a good way to look at yourself? Adopted into the family of God, blessed with all spiritual blessings, chosen before the foundation of the world, holy and without blame before him in love. Glory to God. That's a beautiful perspective. Or that's a beautiful outlook to have in life. Isn't that a great way to live? To walk out your house in the morning knowing I'm a citizen of the kingdom. My wife and I, when we get in the car, uh, you know, I'll say a prayer as we're pulling out. I speak the word. She'll tell you, I start speaking the word. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. I'll be like, Lord, we thank you that we're your very own children. You're our very own father. You're going to take care of us today. The same way a shepherd takes care of his flock. The way, same way a father takes care of his children. We thank you no evil is going to befall us. No plague or accident is coming near us. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. That's how I talk. <laughs> God, this is not make-believe. It's not something I do just on uh, a Wednesday night for the Now Network. It's my lifestyle. I live life from a New Testament perspective or I live life from a King's perspective. Are you getting this? Glory to God. Go to the book of Philippians chapter 3. I'm just giving you the stuff I feed on, folks. This is the way I live. And 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 it'll work for anybody. Get this the Bible. Amen. Look at uh, chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to point out that word conversation. It literally means in the Greek, citizenship. As a matter of fact, if you have a more modern translation, it literally says that, doesn't it? Look down at your Bible. Or if you have one of those phones, just look it up and, and pull up another translation. Um, NIV, the American Standard Version, those Bibles, they tell you right off the bat, we're talking about your citizenship. Now, as I meditated on that one day, I asked the Holy Ghost, I said, Lord, um, if the word conversation means citizenship, why did the translator just say that? I, 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 that's how I talk when I study the word. Why did he just say that? And this is what I got. The translators use the word conversation because they wanted to get over to us that our kingdom status, listen to this, our kingdom status should affect our conduct. You hear what the Lord said? He said it was translated that way because the translator wanted, in the Greek, there are some words that are hard to translate into English, folks. And so they have to get it over to you the best way they could. And so what they were trying to get over to us was, your kingdom status ought to affect the way you live, baby. Right? When you know who you are, it ought to change the way you live. I love what I heard Pastor Creflo Dollar say when I wrote it down. Um, he said, our identity should dictate our behavior. When you know who you are, it ought to change the way you walk, baby. You ought not to act the way you used to act once you find out who you are. Glory to God. When I walk on the job, when I walk in a building, folks, when I walk in a supermarket, I don't care what, when I walk in, as far as I'm concerned, the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Watch this. When I step in the building, anything can happen if I can get you to believe something. Glory to God. Yeah. Well, the kingdom of God is at hand. Um, a member of the household of God just stepped in the building, baby. Yeah. A member of the household just stepped in. Someone who was just adopted into the family of God accepted in the beloved holy without blame before him in love just walk in the building oh god and and when i know that anything can happen anything glory to god go to the book of uh romans i'm sorry yeah let's go to romans chapter five we have a couple minutes i have several scriptures here but I, let's go to romans chapter five uh, look at verse 17 for if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, death reigned or ruled by one, much more, you get that? Much more, not a little bit, much more. They which receive the abundance of grace, so you have to receive it, and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. The Phillips translation says it this way, live their lives like kings. Now that's in the Bible, folks. God expects us after we receive this grace and this gift of righteousness to live life like kings. Ladies, you ought to live like a queen, dress like a queen, talk like a queen, eat like a queen, live your life like a king and a queen in Christ. One more scripture real quick and then we're going to get out of here. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 9. <clears throat> but you are a chosen generation. See what I put on my Bible? I don't know if you can see that. I am a chosen generation. They're talking to me. <laughs> A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Meaning I'm special, I'm particular. Watch this. I belong exclusively to him. That's in the Bible. Boy, my time's up. I'm done. <laughs> That's who you are, beloved. I want you to live your life from a New Testament perspective. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, let's take a moment to do that now. You need to get in this kingdom. Say, Father, I believe this gospel that was taught and preached today. I thank you that your son Jesus bore my sin and my sickness and my poverty and went to hell in my place. I thank you that on the third day you raised him from the dead. And I confess, Jesus is my Lord. If you need healing in your body, lay your hands on yourself. And I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the authority of the kingdom of God that by Jesus' stripes you are healed. You've been listening to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast. I'm Dr. Garen Gatling. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. Until then, you remember, Jesus is Lord.